Hey guys, it's Mr. Melberger again. Uh, and I guess you're back for another episode of me reading chapter three of Seed Folks entitled Wendell. My phone doesn't ring much, which suits me fine. That's how I got the news about our boy, shot dead like a dog in the street, and the word last year about my wife's car wreck. I can't hear a phone and not jerk inside. When Anna called, I was still asleep. Phone calls that wake you up are the worst. Get up here quickly, she says. I live on the ground floor and watch out for her a little. We're the only white people left in the building. I ran up the stairs. I could tell it was serious. I prayed I wouldn't find her dead. When I got there, she looked perfectly fine. She dragged me over to the window. Look down there, she says. They're dying. What? I yelled back. The plants, she says. I was mad. She gave me some binoculars and told me all about the Chinese girl. I found the plants and got them in focus. There were four of them in a row, still little. They were wilted. Leaves flopped flat on the ground. What are they, she asked. Some kinds of beans. I grew up on a little farm in Kentucky, but she planted them way too early. She's lucky these seeds even came up. But they did, said Anna, and it's up to us to save them. It was a weekend in May and hot. You'd have thought that those beans were hers. They needed water, especially in the heat. She said the girl hadn't come in four days, sick, probably, or gone out of town. Anna had twisted her ankle and couldn't manage the stairs. She pointed to a pitcher. Fill that up and soak them good. Quick now. School janitors take too much bossing all week to listen to an extra helping on weekends. I stared at her uh, one long moment, then took my time about uh, filling the pitcher. I walked down the stairs and into the lot and found the girl's plants. You don't plant beans till the weather's hot. Then I saw what had kept her seeds from freezing. The refrigerator in front of them had become the sunlight uh, bounced the sunlight back onto the soil, heating it up like an oven. I bent down and gave the dirt a feel. It was hard-packed and light-colored. I studied the plants, leaves shaped like spades in the deck of cards. Definitely beans. I scraped up a ring of dirt around the first plant to hold the water and any rain that fell. I picked up the pitcher and poured the water slowly. Then I heard something move and spun around. The girl was there. Stone still, ten feet away, holding her own water jug. She hadn't seen me behind the refrigerator. She looked afraid for her life. Maybe she thought I'd jump, I'd jump up and grab her. I gave her a smile and showed her that I was just giving her plants some water. This made her eyes go even bigger. I stood up slowly and uh, backed away. I smiled again. She watched me leave. We never spoke one word. I walked back there that evening and checked on the beans. They picked themselves up and were looking fine. I saw that she had made a circle of dirt around the other three plants. Out of nowhere, the words from the Bible came into my head. And a little child shall lead them. I didn't know why at first, then I did. There's plenty about my life I can't change. Can't bring the dead back to life on this earth. Can't make the world loving and kind. Can't change myself into a millionaire. But a patch of ground in a trashy lot, I can change that. Can change that big. Better to put my time into that than, the, um, than moaning about the other all day. That little grammar school girl showed me that. The lot had buildings on three sides. I uh, walked around and picked myself out a spot that wouldn't be shaded too much. I dragged the garbage off to the side and tossed out the biggest pieces of broken glass. I looked over my plot, squatted down, and fingered the soil a while. That Monday, I brought a shovel home from work. All right, thank you for listening. If you want to um, listen to the other chapters of Seed Folks, feel free to subscribe. Thank you.